Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the bellows on your front load washer. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we will need to pull the washer far enough forward so that we can remove screws that secure the main top to the cabinet. We're also going to need to take the lower access panel off and the front panel and door assembly as well as the control panel. So we'll begin by pulling it far enough forward so that we can access the back and remember to unplug the washer before we begin. Now we have access to the back. We'll remove these three screws that secure that top. And just pull back slightly on that top. And disengage the hooks at the front. And we can lift it off, set it aside. And we'll go back to the front of the washer. Next, we'll pull open the dispenser drawer, pull the drawer as far as it will go, and then you press that tab at the back to release it. We'll remove that and set it aside. And next, we'll locate a single screw over on the left-hand side here. And depending on the model, there may be a single screw at the very top, right at the bottom of that console. Remove that as well. And then we need to release that tab on the right hand side. Now before we pull out on the bottom of that console, we need to release this tab. So just put enough pressure on it so that it will line up with the opening in that support panel. And then pull it back. Hinge it forward, and then lift up on the top. And then lift up on the top to disengage the tabs at the top. And you can lay that console across the top of the washer. Now our next step is we can remove the two screws that secure the door latch assembly to the front panel. You can remove these two screws that secure that door lock assembly. Take note that those screws have a built-in flat washer to protect the painted finish. the door open we can also remove that band clamp that goes around that bellows. On the very bottom you'll note there's a spring and there'll be a loop on the end of a wire band that attaches to that spring. So just grab that loop and roll that out. Remove that clamp and set it aside. And also peel that bellows away from the front panel. Just let it tuck inside. And close the door back up. We'll next remove three screws from the bottom of the lower access panel. To support that panel is remove the last screw. Tilt it out and let it drop down, releasing these two locating tabs. Okay, next remove the two lower screws for that door and front panel assembly. And then while supporting that door and front panel assembly, we'll remove the two top screws. Drop down, tilt it out, and then remove it as an assembly. Now with the front panel door out of the way, our next step is to remove the clamp that secures that bellows to the outer tub. Over on the left side you'll see a Phillips screw that tightens that clamp. 
Just take note of the location of it. And loosen that screw. And loosening that screw, make sure the head of the screw stays tight up against that coil on that wire band so that it doesn't thread itself into the top portion as well. We don't need to remove the screw, but we should loosen it most of the way. And then we can peel it away from that bellows. Then just take the bellows and peel it away from the loader tub. And we discard the old one. Next, we'll inspect that lip around the face of that odor tub. Make sure that that's not damaged. Make sure your basket is tight in the bearings. And if all of that is good, we can go ahead and proceed to replace that bellows. We've taken the opportunity to clean up that lip of that tub just a bit. Remove any soap debris that may be there. I'm also going to want to take that new bellows, and you'll note the profile of it, a portion of that will tuck inside of that odor tub in between the odor tub and the inner basket. So if you wish, you can take a little bit of that cleaning fluid, maybe just to moisten that area enough, it will allow that to slide on there easier. Now that we've lubricated up that bellows, we're going to locate the bottom of the bellows, which is where the little drain holes are, and we'll line those up with that slotted opening on the bottom of the odor tub. Now we want to tuck that portion inside in between the odor tub and the inner basket. we have that tucked in between the tubs, we can then concentrate on making sure that it's lined up properly. Make sure that, that those drain holes are centered in the six o'clock position. And the tab on the top is right at the 12 o'clock position. Then we're going to take the odor lip of that bellows. You'll see there's a little bee groove in that. We need to peel that out over the V-shaped channel on that odor tub. We use caution when you do that so that you don't pull that bellows out from between the inner and outer basket. You may find the method that works best for you is to reach inside the bellows on that rigid band and keep putting pressure on there to fold that lip hold over the outside. Again, make sure that we have it lined up straight. And it sits in that groove all the way around. And we can take that band, slide it into that groove. Once we verify that that's sitting in that V groove, we can start to tighten that clamp. Now with that clamp tightened securely, our next step will be to put the front panel back on. So take the door and front panel assembly and we're going to tuck this top lip 
just in underneath the edge of that. And then just line up the top two screw holes. And verify that the bottom ones are lined up. Then we can open up that door. Now with the front panel firmly in place, we're next going to reach inside, locate that door lock assembly, line it up in the opening, make sure that the door switch gets snugly in that circular opening. Install the retaining screws. Well, next, we'll pull that bellows through the opening just enough that the odor lip comes through. Make sure there's no kinks in it. Then you'll take note that there is a V groove shape on the lip of that bellows that will tuck right into the folded edge on that front panel. So just fit that all the way around. Now inspect that all the way around the perimeter. Make sure that the edge of that bellows is laying flush against the front panel, which would indicate that it's set firmly in position. Well, next we'll install the band clamp at the front. First of all, make sure that the spring is pulled right to the ends of those loops on the wire band, locate it in about the six o'clock position. Make sure that that band sits right down in that groove. And with a pair of needle-nose pliers, grasp the end of that wire band. And then we're going to pull that band towards us, which will stretch the spring. And then fit the rest of that wire down into the bellows. Inspect it to make sure that it's set firmly in place. And we can close that door up. Well, next we'll reinstall that lower access panel. So we'll begin by taking these locating pins and then we'll put the holes at the bottom of the front panel. A lot of upward pressure on that lower access panel. We'll start by putting the center screw in first. And once we have that lock in place, we can install the two outside ones. Now our next step will be to reinstall the console or control panel. So just roll that over. It's probably better to open up the door if your model uses the screw through the bottom of that control panel because we want to make sure that we hook that down below that bracket. Once we have that tucked in underneath there, press in firmly on the right hand side so that tab engages on the side. And snap the top into place. We'll reinstall the retaining screw on the left side by the detergent box. 
install the screw up through the center into the console. Make sure it goes in flush. We install the detergent drawer. And now we can put the main top on. Set it back about a half inch from the back of the console, pull it forward, and then install the three screws across the back. And now we can push the washer back into position. We're ready to reconnect the power and our repair is complete. Thank you.